Hello and welcome to the island slash atoll country of Kiribati. Yeah, I know it's spelt like it looks like Kiribati, but T-I in the local language is pronounced S, hence Kiribati. So I said in the last film in Nauru that Nauru was the least visited country in the world. The next on the list are Marshall Islands, Tuvalu and here in Kiribati. Now Kiribati is made up of 32 atolls and an atoll is a former island with a reef where the island has subsided in the middle leaving just the outer coral reef. That's what an atoll is and there are 32 atolls in Kiribati and of the roughly 440 atolls in the world most of them are in the Pacific Ocean. Kiribati has a total land area of about 811 square kilometres spread over three and a half million square kilometres of ocean territory. Kiribati is the only country in the world that is in all four hemispheres, north, south, east and west. And in fact, it's got the furthest east time zone. Now you'd think the most easterly time zone would be UTC plus 12, but actually it's UTC plus 14. In other words, it crosses over because the international dateline does a loop around some of the Kiribati Islands. So actually Kiribati is the only country in the world where you can jump on a sailboat, head west and go to yesterday and then go to tomorrow. Kiribati was inhabited from at least 3000 BC and leading up to and including the colonial times, the people of Kiribati marked themselves by a lot of blood feuds and brutal civil wars. After the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese invaded here and occupied from 1941 to 1943. And in November 1943, the US Marine Corps had their first contested invasion as they hopped along through the Pacific to wipe out the Japanese. The Japanese fought almost to the last man here with the Marine Corps losing around about six and a half thousand soldiers on a beach that had almost no defensive capability while attacking. Kiribati got its full independence from the United Kingdom in 1979. The Kiribati economy is heavily reliant on foreign aid because there are just not many natural resources here. The phosphate that did exist on some of the atolls was wiped out by the end of the colonial era and if it wasn't for foreign aid and the battle between China and countries like Australia, this economy would collapse. In fact, I bumped into a group from Taiwan just in Nauru who weren't able to come to Kiribati because Kiribati has just changed its recognition from Taiwan to People's Republic of China and are not giving visas to people from Taiwan anymore. But the long-term battle between China and Western countries for influence over Kiribati is pretty much non-existent. Tubeo and Abunuea are two islands here that went underwater just a couple of years ago, signaling that this is actually predicted to be the first country to lose all of its territory with climate change. And you see the feeble attempts that are being made with sandbags to try and stop the incoming of the oceans. In 2008, Kiribati President Tong said, it is difficult to plan for the day when we don't have any land, but it is the sensible thing to do. Whilst the population doesn't want to move, the president is preparing them to, asking both New Zealand and Australia to accept Kiribati as permanent refugee status. Now, in the current climate in Australia, when we are debating refugees, asylum seekers and migration, how happy would Australians be to accept 118,000 Kiribatis because of climate change? So you indeed feel a little bit sad for the people of Kiribati. It is potentially a very, very beautiful country, but its long-term future is not bright. On that note, let's head to the Marshall Islands.